Where would you go if you had a big stash of Qantas points? Well, with the Qantas Frequent Flyer One World Classic Flight Reward Booking, you can go pretty much anywhere. And the best thing is, it is one of the best value ways to use your Qantas points. For example, a Melbourne to London return in business costs about the same as a One World Classic Flight Reward, including not just one stop in London, but stopovers in up to five cities. By the way, to do that in cash, you'll likely be spending over $11,000 to go around the world in business class. So if that's got your brain ticking over, here's everything you need to know on how to book a Qantas One World Classic Flight Reward using your Qantas points. Let's start with, what is a Qantas One World Classic Flight Reward? Well, Qantas Frequent Flyer has four separate points tables for different flights. We're focusing on this last one today. What's special about the One World Classic Flight Reward Table? Firstly, it covers travel up to 35,000 miles. That's a lot of miles and can easily get you around the world. And you can mix from all those One World Partner Airlines to create a personally tailored itinerary. Just note other Qantas non-One World Partners like Emirates and One World Connect Airlines like Fiji Airways aren't included, so can't be used in this type of itinerary. Each class is also capped, so you'll pay these maximums in points plus taxes. Now, economy does look appealing for the price, but if you can save up to 318,000 points, we'd recommend business class. You'll have plenty of airlines and flights to choose from, and you'll get lounge access in between flights. Those showers and complimentary coffees will make all the difference on your round the world trip. Also, fun fact, if you fly through Singapore like I did recently on a One World business class ticket, you will likely get into any One World lounge, including this one, this one, that one. Oh, and all these too. That's worth it for a Changi lounge crawl alone. But before you rush to book, there are some rules that you need to be aware of. You must include at least two other One World Airlines besides Qantas and not include any non-One World Airlines. Up to 16 segments of travel are allowed, including transits under 24 hours and surface segments. A surface segment is where you make your own way between two cities by alternative transport. You can have up to five stopovers. These are where you'll stop for longer than 24 hours, so essentially the main cities you'd like to visit. You can also stop over in each city once and transit through each city twice on one booking. You have 12 months to complete the whole trip after your first flight. You can travel up to 35,000 miles all up and that'll include surface sectors and transits. You can finish your itinerary in a different city to the one you started in, but the distance between the start and finish will still add to the 35,000 mile limit. And very important to note, the cost of your itinerary will be based on the highest cabin class that you book. So if you have 14 business class flights and even one connection in first class, your whole booking will be treated as a first class One World Classic flight reward. Don't be tempted, don't do it. So those rules may sound intimidating at first, but there are countless options to explore the globe this way. I want to show you a few we explored using the Great Circle Mapper. This is a great way to see if your itinerary gets close to hitting that 35,000 mile mark. Definitely make sure to do the same with your trip before committing to a booking. This first itinerary is pretty basic and will take you to some of the world's greatest cities, utilizing routes serviced by Qantas, British Airways, American Airlines, and Cathay Pacific. As you can see, it comes in well below the 35,000 mile limit. This one with some shorter connecting flights comes in at 32,000 miles. Also, while this hits five stopover cities, there's nothing preventing you from using that stopover as a base to see more of the surrounding areas on separate tickets. You could also use LA as one base to explore the east coast of the US, for example. As long as you leave from LA again, it won't count towards your miles. Finally, here's a trip a Point Hacks reader by the name of Mark sent in. He traveled to South Africa and North and South America, but focused most of his trip flying short distances between major European cities. Despite the journey being quite complex, it still ticks all the boxes for the One World Reward. It's under 35,000 miles and fewer than 16 flight segments. He goes through London twice, but that's allowed since both times he simply transited through the airport. So now you know the rules and who to book with. Now let's get into how you actually book your flights. Once you're ready to book, the simplest way to find reward seats for a One World itinerary is to search one flight at a time. You can use the Qantas website search engine to find most reward seat availability, but also consider using the British Airways or American Airlines website for backup results. It can be time consuming, so have a notepad handy to write down, 
the date of travel, departure and arrival cities, flight number, departure and arrival times, and keep repeating this for each city, bearing in mind that sometimes you might need to connect via an intermediary city. Then book online through the Qantas website via the multi-city booking tool. While this round the world button may seem the obvious way to book, it doesn't allow you to find reward seats. It can be another good tool to quickly check if your itinerary is within the rules, however. Feel free to use this as an alternative to Great Circle Mapper. If your itinerary is particularly long, you might not be able to book everything in one go. That's okay, you can book some of the flights now and add more later. Just keep in mind that every time you change the booking, you may cop a change fee of 5,000 Qantas points per person. If you need help or want to book on a partner that doesn't show up on the Qantas website, then your best bet is to phone Qantas Frequent Flyer. Once you select the final leg of your trip back to your port of origin, the website should have capped your points cost to one of these numbers depending on your highest cabin class. And that's it. We have a flight around the world. Now, if you've gotten to this stage and it's not giving you the cost you expected, you've likely broken a rule. There are a few things that you can do to double check. Make sure you're only using the 14 full One World member airlines, not Qantas partners such as Emirates or Fiji Airways. Subsidiaries of major airlines are usually okay. So for example, this includes Qantas Link for Australian regional connections. Make sure you have no more than five stopovers in your trip. If you're transiting, make sure the connection is shorter than 24 hours. Otherwise, it counts as a stopover. If you're making your way between two cities through alternative means like a train, be sure to include that distance in your overall calculations. Those ground sectors do count in your 35,000 mile distance limit. Check your cabin class is consistent with each flight. Even if one flight is in a higher cabin class than the rest of your itinerary, your booking will reprice at the higher rate. Finally, if you still have trouble, our best advice is to try calling Qantas. The main thing to remember is to keep your itinerary as flexible as possible. If you want some inspiration on this topic, we made a video about it here. Check it out.